Hello friends, welcome to my channel Go Digit. Today in this video, we will learn about one of the new feature introduced in the latest version of the Business Central called Bank Deposits. Okay, so this is the BC21 cloud environment and uh, let me go to the search bar and here what we need to type is, is this Bank Deposit. Okay and uh, then you have to click on the very first link and just open the same and when you open this it will open this list page for you which is uh, a bank deposit list page it will show you all the uh, documents which you have prepared and have not posted yet in the system okay so uh, before we create a new bank deposit, let me give you a definition about this feature. Uh, it's as the name suggests, it's a feature through which you can deposit uh, all the amount which you are in actual depositing in your bank account via the system. Okay, so for example, if you receive any amount from your customer, then uh, that transaction you can prepare via this bank account feature okay for example if you receive any refund from your vendor that also you can highlight here also if you are doing interbank transactions which mean you are transferring certain amount from your one bank account to another bank account that also you can do from here only okay and uh, one of the major feature I could say is that uh, for example whenever you receive any amount from your customer with respect to the certain open invoices so you can apply those open invoices as well right from this document and when you post this document it will close all your open invoices all your open customer invoices with the payment entry okay so this is uh, what is the use of this bank deposit feature let's see these features one by one so to create a bank deposit you can click on the new button and uh, it's a document and so that uh, you can see one is the header portion and second one is the line portion okay so let's generate a new document number for this and now you can uh, in the bank account number you have to select that on which bank you want to deposit a particular amount so for example let me select this one savings okay and now in this field as the name suggests total deposit amount that how much money you are uh, depositing into this particular bank account so let's say I'm depositing 10,000 okay let me put this as T for today okay now as I, as I mentioned the amount here you can see the difference is showing the 10,000 itself which means it always validate whatever amount you input here with the total amount uh, in the credit amount column uh, in the line section okay so that's why because currently there is no line available and that is the reason the difference is showing similar to the total deposit amount okay now uh, one of this checkbox you can see post as lump sum which means that in, uh, because uh, this is the bank account in which you are posting all these 10 uh, 10000 amount okay in case you input multiple lines here so uh, but you don't want uh, to uh, generate multiple lines in your post in bank account ledger entry for against this particular bank then you can make this as checkbox to true which means that for this bank account system will create only one entry of 10,000 and uh, multiple uh, different entities entries will be uh, posted to its respective uh, ledger entries like customer or vendor or bank uh, based on whatever lines you mention here okay but uh, I don't recommend this so you should always uncheck this but uh, what you can do is uh, because for example if you do the if you make the breakup available in the ledger entries you will always be able to identify that this entry belongs to what uh, what type of transactions okay so this is the header part 
Okay, so once you fill up the header part and uh, feel that everything is good enough, now let's move to the line. So the very first column is the account type. Okay, so here you see all the account types which you generally see in the general general line table or the general journal or uh, like you said, the sales journal, purchase journal. So uh, same type of uh, options are available in this account type as well. Okay, because in the back end, only the general general is running behind. General general line table is running behind. So that's why you see all these options similar to the general general line table. So uh, the functionality is very much same. So for example, if uh, you are receiving money from your customer, then you can select the customer. Okay, and as soon as you uh, select the customer, you see the document type, uh, which is of two types only, payment and refund. And of course, one of the options is blank. Okay, so uh, because uh, you're receiving a payment from your customer, that's why it auto selected as a payment document type. Now, if I select, let's say vendor here, Okay, as soon as I select vendor here, the document type is mentioned here as refund because you are depositing a money, okay, into your bank account, this one. Okay, so it's not like that you can pay to your vendor via this feature. No, you cannot pay to your vendor via this feature. This feature is only useful to deposit the money into your bank account. So that's why with vendor, it is always mentioned as refund. Okay, so, uh, third option is that uh, maybe you want to do some interbank transactions, so you can select the bank account here. And because you are you are making a payment from one of the bank account to uh, to this bank account to this bank account, that's why the option is payment. Okay, so let's see uh, how we can divide this ten thousand in in these lines. So for example, uh, let me select here, uh, let's say 20,000. Okay, and let's say document number is this. And now, uh, what we can do is that if we want to uh, apply some of the open invoices of this customer, so we can select this line, okay, and click uh, on the functions and click on the apply entry. In case you do not know, for example, you can always uh, go click on the line and go to its customer ledger entries section and through which you can see that how many open invoices are there and what invoices you want to apply against this payment. Okay, so let's say I click on the functions and click on the apply entries and here I could see that there is one invoice available. Remaining amount is this one. So what I can do here is click on process, click on set applies to ID and click on OK. As soon as you click on OK, this amount gets automatically updated here because you are getting the payment from your customer against its one of the open invoices. OK, so that's how you manage to do it. Now, as soon as you put this, OK, your first entry is done. Now, uh, let's say you select here 10,000 against your vendor and your vendor is refunding an amount to you against, against certain invoices or something. So, uh, for example, if you really want to see, you can click on the apply entries. Okay, let, he's saying that I have to mention some document number first. So let me put it first here then click on the apply entries and now you can see that it is showing me this particular invoice through which I could I could uh, let's say refund certain amount okay or in case you do not want to apply then also you can uh, later on after posting you can after posting this bank account you can later on uh, apply those certain entries so it is not necessary it is not mandatory that if you are making an entry of customer and vendor then you must have to apply something okay so what i can do here is uh, let's say i am i am getting 
uh, some amount uh, of let's say 1000 from this particular vendor as a refund okay so let's see our first two entries are completed now the third one is the bank account because uh, on the top I have selected the saving means I, I have already selected the saving so which means that I am uh, depositing my money into the saving account but then it does not mean that I should select the saving here because then this entry does not reflect anything it does not uh, uh, mean anything to you because you cannot credit and debit the same amount from the same bank so I could select the checking here which means that I'm getting the money from the my checking bank account and I'm saving that money which I'm getting from this checking bank account to this saving bank account okay so what I can say here is like like this and now you see one of the differences that after these two entries my total amount which is pending against uh, my total deposit is 7987 so I can write down that rest of the money is I'm getting from my bank account checking okay so this is how what you can uh, like you can create multiple types of entries apply certain open invoices against your payments and now once you are done with it uh, before you can post what you can do here is like you can mention some comments also or you can add some dimensions but uh, one of the uh, one of the important things i really want to uh, want you to please check before posting is the test report so when you click on the test report uh, you can just click on the show applications so that uh, whatever invoices you have applied against any of the payment line you can always see that in your test report click on preview and uh, when you click on preview you can see that uh, my first entry of customer type against which I am making a payment of 1012 I am applying that payment with this invoice INV102195 and this is of the same amount then my second line is of the vendor and third line is of the bank okay and that is how I am consuming all my 10,000 10, amount so let's cross this click on cancel and let's click on post do you want to post the bank deposit yes I want to post the bank deposit and that's it my bank deposit is posted now let's see the results click on the bank deposit you can always undo your posting which you have already did it will reverse all your ledger entries in case you feel that you have wrongly posted something okay but uh, if you click on the find entries you can uh, you can see the results for example this is my bank ledger entry okay and you can see that it has created three lines because I did not check that post as lump sum fee okay that's why it, it is showing me three different lines T678, T679, T670 okay so if you see my first line it is of 1012 then uh, which is I'm getting a payment from my customer then this is the second line which I'm getting a payment, uh, getting a refund from my vendor and this is a third line where I'm getting the payment from my, one of my different bank account which is uh, checking okay so if you select this and uh, let's say click on find entries it is showing me customer ledger entry you click on the customer ledger entry and that is the payment entry against the customer and in this case the customer gets gets what gets credited because customer is paying you the amount okay your bank gets debited and uh, customer gets credited and this is why that's why it's showing the minus line okay and because it's a payment entry but we did one more thing we apply this payment entry with one of the open invoices so let's see whether the application is also done successfully or not 
so for this let me click on the line uh, okay I think the related entry applied entries when you click on it you see that against this payment entry this invoice number gets successfully applied to your payment okay and that's how of the same invoice amount and the same payment amount both these two entry gets closed okay so our application is done successfully okay then that's great close this now see the second entry click on uh, the fine entries and here you will see one vendor ledger entry so here you can see the document type as refund and amount is minus 1000 because your vendor is paying you a certain amount okay so that's why this gets credited and your bank gets debited okay so because I have not applied any uh, any invoice or any credit memo so if you see here you will not find any applied entries here okay now let's see the third entry which is 7987 and if I click on the fine entries here you see because it's a bank to bank so that's why two bank account ledger entries are showing here so from checking I am uh, checking is the bank account checking is a source bank account from where I'm getting the money and I'm uh, depositing that money which I'm getting from the checking bank account to the saving bank account so that's why if you uh, scroll it to the right you see that your checking bank accounts gets credited and your uh, saving bank account gets debited okay so amount is deducted from the checking and amount gets deposited in, deposited into the saving bank account so that's how we can do the interbank transactions as well successfully via bank deposit feature okay and of course as i told you before if you feel that you have wrongly posted something you can always click on this button and reverse all the impact of the ledger okay so uh, I think that's a very handy feature which uh, we can all which we, we must have to use in order to handle our day-to-day -day business transactions so uh, that's all in this today's video guys if you like this video I request you to please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching this video